How's it going guys? In this video we're going to go over bond enthalpies in thermal chemistry and the fourth and final way of calculating delta H or enthalpy. So let's just jump right in. Basically uh, bond enthalpies, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll kind of go through it as, as we go through a problem. So oftentimes they're phrased like this, You're using bond enthalpies. Estimate Rxn for the enthalpy of the reaction for, and it'll give you a reaction, CH4 plus Cl2 yields CH3Cl plus HCl. So basically what we're doing is we're talking about the bond uh, the bonds that are broken compared to the bonds that are formed, and we're using those. Uh, and, and each each bond has a unique uh, enthalpy, basically. And we're going to use that to to figure out what the enthalpy for the reaction is. Um, so this is something that I like to do sometimes, and you know you don't always have to do it. Um, again, this is kind of one of those things that the, if you do these problems all the time, eventually you probably just do all this in your head. Um, but I think that once you're getting started, it can be a good idea, especially when you're just learning it, because it I think it provides a good framework of how to think about it in your head. It also gives you some practice in envisioning how these molecules are theoretically arranged. All right, cool. So there we go. And now we're just gonna, like I said, we're gonna compare the two sides. I like to set it up just like this, like a chart. And we're going to take bonds broken. Compared to bonds formed. In other words, exothermic and versus endo. And they'll fight it out to figure out what the actual, uh, you know, the, the reaction is going to be, or what the enthalpy of the reaction is going to be. So in this case, I like to count up the bonds. So we have one, two, three, four CH bonds, and then we have one C to C bond or CLCL. Now on this side we have three CH. We have one C to CL, and one H to CL. So in these cases, I almost always I think that you're going to get some kind of chart that looks something like this, and uh, it's going to have uh, basically a whole bunch of the values, and it can have them for multiple bonds, uh, and and usually you, you should be supplied something like this, and uh, you know you can use those you, basically you use those numbers to figure out uh, you know how to calculate this, but essentially you're going to have the enthalpy of the reaction is going to be equal to basically all the bonds broken uh, minus all the bonds formed, like the, the, the total enthalpy of bonds formed. So we're going to have 4, 14 kg here per mole, which is just the um, the CH bond of 1. What we did is we canceled, let's see where my pencil is, um, we took this 4 over here and the 3 over here and we just did made that one CH zero, canceled it out. So we're just doing the one and that's gonna be plus the charge of the one CLCL. So basically if you have a chart that looks like, again, like this, you're gonna find the CL and find the other CL and go like that. We're gonna have 243. Joules per mole, and then we have, whoops, pardon me, we have um, minus everything on this side. So the CCL bond is going to be the 331 kJ per mole. Again, that's just coming straight from our chart. Minus, oops, minus 431 kilojoules per mole, which is our H to CL. And again, you, it's not exactly like the enthalpies of formation where you sum everything. Um, in this case, 
as we know from way back when we were doing these, um, if the delta H is greater than one, it's endothermic. So these are endo because their bonds broken. Uh, and, and I'm sorry, breaking the bonds is endothermic. And then forming the bonds is exothermic. So forming the bonds is going to be exothermic. So it's going to be minus everything that is on this side. So that's basically all there is to these. Um, it's from there, it's simple math. Cool joules per mole. And again, if they asked you, the net reaction is exothermic. So there's just like a, the, a you know, the first one we'll go over. It's, I think pretty basic, and, and a lot of these are once you once you get the hang of them. Um, it, whoops, that looks like a three. Like I said, for for a lot of these types of problems, there there can be tricky ones. Uh, they they can come out of left field sometimes, uh, but it's not. I don't know. There, there's most of the time it's pre, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so here we go. I think these are the easiest way to find delta H if you get them. For that reason, though, I think that it's possible that professors won't spend as much time on them because they know how easy it is. Or for, for, you know, for a lot of people. Um, okay, so we'll say for, I'm sorry, for the following reaction I should have wrote. We'll say C2H4 plus 3O2 yields 2CO2 plus 2H2O. Okay, so in this case, uh, you know, if you have one of those charts uh, to, to calculate bond enthalpy, this might be a good point to pause and then kind of just go through and see what what makes, you know, what you get. Um, being able to write them out is, I guess, important. So if that's something that, that you might struggle with, uh, that's something that definitely is worth practicing because it can trip you up. You can make a miscalculation if you're not exactly sure where double bonds are versus single bonds. And that's something again, like practice plus, you know, having done general chemistry one helps a lot. In this case, we'll have one of these and three of these because of the mole ratio. Then we have over here, O, C, O. We're gonna have two of those. And then we're gonna have H2O times two. Okay, so now we're gonna go in just like we did on the last one. We're gonna compare the bonds form to the bonds broken. And again, this is endo, so it should be all positive. And this is exo, so it should be all negative. Um, okay, so we'll just jump right in. Uh, we have the H to C, we have the C to C, we have the O to O. And that is going to be and, oh yeah, and what I like to do is write them out sequentially for each step. Uh, that way you can compare them. But unfortunately, in this case, it doesn't look like we have much that we can. You know, we can't really cr like cancel anything out, so we're just gonna have to go into it. So th this will be um, four times four, fourteen, one times six, twelve, and three times. 498 and we're just going to add that all up okay so what i got for that was 370 uh, 3762 kilojoules per mole 
of bonds broken, so endothermic, um, minus what we have over here, which is that. So we have four times 715. Then we have another four times, because two per molecule, and there's two of them. Um, we have four times the 464, and that's gonna, I'm getting, so we have, I'll just do them each, minus 2860 minus 1856 equals, so we have 3762, 954, negative 954 kilojoules per mole, and that is going to be exothermic. All right, great. So we'll just do one more, I think. Um, let's see, think, try to think of something that might be more tricky. So let's see here. Um, scoot that up a little bit. Using bond enthalpies. Estimate. For two C two H six plus seven O two four C O two plus six H two O. So obviously having more variation in the mole ratios or, or larger larger numbers on them is gonna make you have to do more multiplication in larger numbers potentially greater chance at making errors. So just obviously be mindful of that. Um, we have C to C, H, H, H. Whenever you have like some combination of C's and H's, I usually just um, create a carbon chain and then um, saturate it with hydrogens, see where I am at. And then if I need to make any changes, I can. seven of these. Then we have the CO2, which is going to be four of those. And then um, six H2O. Oof, I'm getting really messy. Okay. So again, like I always do, and I think one of the tricks for me in Gen Chem was just trying to do things the same way each time, while also um, trying to figure out how to solve for every different variable. Those are like kind of the two main things that I did. Um, I think if you get into a pattern of doing it in a way that is consistent for you before you go into the exam, you'll know exactly what to do when you have that question on the exam, and then you'll just be more efficient. So we have over here two C to C. We have 12 C to H. We have seven O O. And again, this is endo XO. And then over here we have eight C O. And we have 12, actually, yeah, six times two, um, uh, HO. So now let's see, can we cancel anything out? We have, nope, doesn't look like we can. Um, so that's too bad. Then we're just gonna multiply it out. 347, that is 12 times four, 14. That is seven times 498. This is eight times 715. This is 12 times 464. So let's see what we get. Kind of write it out. So we have for endothermic, we 
we have the 694 plus 4968 plus 3486 minus now that we're on the exothermic side uh, 5,000, this is going to be, what is that, 5,000, five thousand seven hundred and twenty and then minus five five six eight okay and that's going to equal negative two thousand one hundred and forty kilojoules per mole and that's going to be exothermic And there we have it. So that is the fourth way to find delta H or enthalpy. Uh, if you wanted to go over calorimetry, Hess's law, or enthalpy of formation, you can check out the previous three videos. And um, yeah, hopefully this this helps someone.